welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Green Life Hacks with Tanya. And on this channel, I promised you I will always invite very interesting persons. And today I have a very special guest, a very young, in my eyes, he's a genius. And um, that's why we also do today um, the interview in English because we have uh, in from the US. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for inviting me. So you are a very young researcher and you started very young with your research. I mean, I can remember when I was 10, I was never thinking about any research or stuff like this. I was playing with Barbies and I was interested already in guys, but never in research really. But you already started your career very young. I mean, please, Stephen, introduce your, yourself and what are you currently doing? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Stephen Litt. I am 18 years old and currently uh, attempting to become potentially a chemical researcher using various chemicals in green tea primarily. So my research actually goes all the way back technically to elementary school when they had local fairs for various competitions. And because I liked research so much, I decided to attempt in middle school to find a long-term project. Wow. And Eventually, as I was kind of researching through topics, I eventually found green tea, various chemicals in it, and stuck with it since then. Wow, amazing. So how did you discover green tea and why did you make it to your focus in your investigation? Because, I mean, there's a lot of natural compounds. So why green tea and how did you discover it? Absolutely. So in sixth grade, like I mentioned, I was looking for a longer term project. And my primary focus that I was most interested in was various diseases. So originally I wanted to try something with malaria, but uh, apparently that's really not a good idea to have in a basement and it's also really expensive. So eventually I found uh, a small species of flatworm known as a planarian that can act as a cancer substitute, but I still needed something to test it with. And after a few days of research, I discovered an article stating that green tea was the most likely cause of uh, reduced rates of cancer in Japan. And from that information, I decided to further research and found a chemical called epigallic catechin 3 gallate or EGCG, that had it been tested as much as I thought maybe it should have been. So I figured, okay, I have a chemical I'd like to work with, with green tea that I find interesting. And let's see what happens. And it's gotten me to this point so far. Wow. And who was supporting you in this research? Your parents, your grandmother? I was reading something, your grandmother, right? So there were a few people originally because I had to work out at the basement in middle school. I had my dad helping, of course, I had to set everything up in his office and my grandparents were uh, kind enough to actually buy me a few supplies of so microscopes and some containers. And once I was in ninth grade and a freshman in high school, I was lucky enough to be taken into a local laboratory so I could perform some more advanced techniques. Wow, amazing. And what exactly did you discover on EGCG, the main ingredients in the green tea plant? Absolutely. So the, there are kind of a few things over the years I've been testing with it. Originally, I started by testing if it would slow down planarian regeneration, which is why I was using it. So essentially, when you cut a planarian in half, it regenerates a new head and a new tail and is completely fine. And scientists found that to be similar to cancer. So once EGCG actually slowed that regeneration down, I decided, and was also once I had access to a lab, I could actually test it with various cells. So originally as kind of a general approach, I tested the EGCG with various cancer cell lines as well as non-cancer cell lines and found that it actually caused 100% cell death in the cancer cell lines, but for the non-cancerous cell lines, it actually slightly decreased the amount of cell death still at an appropriate level. So that means that the EGCG was actually killing off the cancer cells while keeping healthy cells intact. And from that point, and what I could hope to continue to do in the future is attempting to figure out why the chemical EGCG acts the way it does and potentially how this could explain how green tea affects the human body overall. So I then proceeded to test if it would bind to various proteins associated with cancer and found that so far with each of the proteins I've tested that it has actually binded, or sorry, bound to each of the proteins. Wow, that's amazing. And so um, 
you how many years are you uh, continue this study so you started in the elementary school correct i started with this specifically in middle in middle so you were like 10 years old right yeah so you already doing this research for eight years correct i believe so. well yeah it's been around eight years now <laughs> wow. wow so um is your is your sorry is your um research finished now your investigations or it has different phase correct yeah it has more different phases because of course i found that it has the potential to bind to these things but I still need to figure out, of course, just knowing that this could be an opportunity, I need to figure out, or of course, I can't do it alone with other research. I need to do it with other researchers, but I want to figure out why it functions, how it functions, and then how I can use its function to actually potentially alleviate cancer and all of its problems in the future. So now, um, how many days in the week are you researching in your lab for, for this uh, project? So previously I would do anywhere from, well, I guess until everything except for last year would be maybe three days last year, probably five to six days a week, just because I had time and was able to go in a lot for school. This year, because I'll be in college, I won't be able to do as much with it. So maybe one to two days originally, just as I'm working to figure out potentially uh, new professors and how their labs work, but also using those techniques and potentially figuring out how EGCG works with new proteins. And eventually I'm hoping to work maybe three to four days a week, potentially on this. Oh, that's amazing. But that'll be done the line. Because you have to also, I mean, study now in college. And um, does your professor know about your research and your investigations? Yeah, there are a few press professors I've been speaking to. There are actually some researchers on campus that we're working with some similar chemicals and one that actually just recently started working with EGCG. So I'm hoping to get in con con ah, sorry, contact with him eventually. And from there, I'll see what happens. Great. And um, what potential are you seeing for green tea as a nutrition for the future? I think aside from, of course, all the generic antioxidant stuff, which is really good in terms of cancer, it could potentially be used as a way to maybe not necessarily actually it's entirely possible that it just prevents it entirely but what it could also do is make it to where cancer itself isn't exactly a problem and doesn't become super aggressive so one of the main reasons why i think that for now is because the most recent protein i was testing actually is one of the main reasons why cancer is as aggressive as it is and egcg actually bound really strongly to it so i'm hoping that there's some kind of correlation between green tea and stopping cancer aggressiveness. And this protein, which is the name? It's the, I was reading is a six, seven. Yeah. It's called the 67 kilodalton laminin receptor protein or the 67 LR protein. And so, this protein, sorry, is uh, basically, um, if this is activated, it's the, the cancer is more aggressive and EGCG is inhibiting it, right? Correct. That's amazing. And your research is based on in vitro, correct? Yes, I believe so. It's right now it is, but eventually I'll probably try to move it over when I'm, I guess I'm used to thinking, oh, I'm not legally allowed to work with people. Yes. But I'm... eventually that is the end goal. <laughs> Yeah, this is because in vitro and in vivo, it's amazing already findings what you did. So basically, EGCG, if you do it as a prevention, means if you drink green tea or you take capsules, what does it mean? So you can prevent getting cancer or is it like that, that people who has cancer or breast cancer or cervical cancer, if they drink more green tea or take capsules, it reduces um, the stage of the cancer or the metastasis? It doesn't mess this up. Sorry, my English is not so good. Um, so what, what do you think? It's good to drink and to um, take capsules for uh, breast cancer um, prevention. I think the primary thing that, and at least predicting, it will be for prevention, mostly because of the uh, article I mentioned earlier from Japan, where their cancer rates are much lower. And it's speculated because of green tea. So I feel like there's more of 
of course, I haven't done research on the severity of the cancer in Japan, just the amount. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling that there's going to be definitely something with preventing cancer from spreading and potentially once it's actually there, also be able to mitigate it slightly or potentially a lot. So I want to talk about this study in Japan. So it's found out that you more you drink green tea, the less it appears uh, cancer, correct? Or what does the study say? Yes. So this was a study conducted in, I believe it was 1998. And this was one of the main articles I was reading initially when trying to find something to research. And it speculated that the lower cancer rates in Japan were because of green tea, but there wasn't anything in the article specifically saying what in green tea was causing this or anything like that. So I, that's when I decided to further look into green tea and its chemicals and all of its mm, interesting then, properties. Amazing. And then you found um, basically this EGCG, which is one of the catechins, correct? Yes, that is correct. And the other catechins? So the other ones I've looked at a little bit, not as much. I had some extra time a couple of years ago and found that they could potentially also be extremely useful in cancer related things like prevention and making things less aggressive. But I haven't done enough research on it to conclusively say anything. Although... So the main ingredients, what you said, it's the epigallocatehingala, correct? So far from what I've tested, yes, but it's entirely possible that there's even more in there that could be beneficial as well. So do you drink green tea every day? So not every day, just because I don't really drink the same thing every day a lot anyways. I probably should, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like drinking it though, so I, have, I do have it quite frequently. I drink every day minimum one to two liter green tea because I love green tea. And I think it's a great, amazing natural plant, which really has a lot of impact in the human body. And I mean, for me, Stephen, thank you so much um, that you have shared with us your research. And I want to share with you, um, my audience, your uh, website and your research. So thank you so much, Stephen, for attending my interview. And I wish you all the best uh, for your um, college and all the best for your research. Hey, thank you so much.